Hello and welcome to Wretched. My name is Todd Friel. I am your host, the Wretch. The song refers to what you are about to see is many things. It is frustrating. It is angering. Can anger be a gerund? And it is really tragic. If you're not familiar with Rob Bell, he's the Mr. Numa videos. If you visit your local Christian bookstore, he's got shelves of product. Millions of people watch his videos all the time on the internet. He is exceedingly influential among the kids these days. For years, some of us have been warning, uh-oh, looks like we got ourselves a wolf in with the sheep. Well, now, he's just written a new book, and it appears that Rob Bell is out of the closet. With what, specifically? Sure smells like universalism to me. We had an art show at our church, and people brought in all kinds of sculptures and paintings, and we put them on display, and there was this one piece that had a quote from Gandhi in it. And lots of people found this piece compelling. They'd stop and sort of stare at it and take it in and reflect on it, but not everybody found it that compelling. Somewhere in the course of the art show, somebody attached a handwritten note to the piece, and on the note, they had written, reality check, he's in hell. Gandhi's in hell? He is? And someone knows this for sure? And, and felt the need to let the rest of us know? Wow. First of all, did he steal that from Uncle Festus? What is that exactly? It looks like an air filter that was all dirty that he put around his neck. Hello? Is Gandhi in hell? Well, the answer to that is ultimately nobody truly knows. If Gandhi repented and put his trust in Jesus Christ, which is, I think, the correct way to phrase a situation with somebody who is dead, if he repented on his deathbed, well, of course he's in heaven. But if he ended his life the way that he lived it, denying Jesus Christ, the forgiveness of sins that is available in him and him only, well, then of course he would be in hell, just like anybody else who does not trust in the way, the truth, and the life. Rob Bell is, this is a promotional video for his brand new book. And so now we haven't read the book, but this video alone should stand to cause us to go, whoa, what's going on here? Will only a few select people make it to heaven? And will billions and billions of people burn forever in hell? And if that's the case, how do you become one of the few? Is it what you believe or what you say or what you do or who you know or something that happens in your heart? Or do you need to be initiated or baptized or take a class or converted or being born again? How does one become one of these few? Well, the way the Bible says, you repent and put your trust in Jesus Christ. That's how it works. Now, does Rob Bell in this video come out and say, hey, look, of course somebody who doesn't repent and trust in Jesus is in hell. I'm just trying to be provocative. Well, if he's trying to be provocative, at the very least, he's being exceedingly dangerous. And then there is the question behind the questions. The real question, what is God like? Because millions and millions of people were taught that the primary message, the center of the gospel of Jesus, is that God is going to send you to hell unless you believe in Jesus. And so what gets subtly sort of caught and taught is that Jesus rescues you from God. But what kind of God is that, that we would need to be rescued from this God? How could that God ever be good? How could that God ever be trusted? And how could that ever be good news? Honestly? Do you know what this is yet another demonstration of? I know this is shocking. Rob Bell has been a pastor, I believe, for 20 years, give or take. This is another fellow who doesn't understand the gospel. I'm not kidding. He doesn't understand the gospel. He doesn't understand propitiation. He doesn't understand justification. Or if he does, he's clearly rejecting it. This is an example. This is very much along the lines of a Brian McLaren emergent sort of theology. Jesus didn't come to take the wrath of God upon himself that our sins might be put on him and his goodness credited to us. Oh, no. It was merely an example of love. It was simply a demonstration of how we're supposed to live. That is a flat-out rejection of justification. Rob Bell does not seem to understand the basics of the gospel. 
that we're really bad sinners, even Gandhi, who really needs saving. I would like to ask Rob Bell, Rob, is Gandhi going to heaven then based on his goodness? Because if that's the case, if Gandhi is going to heaven based on his goodness, whose standard of goodness are we using here? Rob Bell's? Apparently, I, 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 there's nobody who's going to go to hell? Nobody fails to meet the Rob Bell standard? And if there's somebody who could possibly qualify for the gates of hell, Adolf Hitler, Saddam Hussein, whomever, well then there is a standard. The only problem is Rob is deciding that his is the standard and not God's. This is why lots of people want nothing to do with the Christian faith. They see it as an endless list of absurdities and inconsistencies and they say, why would I ever want to be a part of that? See, what we believe about heaven and hell is incredibly important because it exposes what we believe about who God is and what God is like. What you discover in the Bible is so surprising, unexpected, and beautiful that whatever we've been told or taught, the good news is actually better than that, better than we could ever imagine. The good news is that love wins. Uh, 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 uh. There's something greater than Jesus taking the wrath of the Father upon himself so that I, a wretch, could be forgiven and made clean. There's something greater than that. It was the great theologian foreigner who asked the question, I want to know what love is. Well, apparently to Rob Bell, it's hey, 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 everybody just gets to go to heaven. I have some news for Mr. Bell. That isn't love. That isn't love of justice, and that is not love of righteousness, and that is not love of holiness, because true love also involves those things, and true love punishes evil wherever it is found. It will be punished on us, or it will be punished on his son on our behalf. This is very sad for two reasons. Number one, Rob Bell is clearly in danger. This man, all by himself, is staring at the heresy charge, which would mean he is anathema. He is underneath the Galatians curse that he is not inside of grace. And he's bringing potentially thousands, if not millions of people with him. When we come back on Wretched, the second tragedy of Rob Bell, and it's possible, maybe, that it's even worse than the first tragedy. Next, on Wretched. It was the great theologian, the Bee Gees, who sang, Tragedy, that is what you are looking at. This is Wretched, that is Rob Bell, one of the most influential preachers in the world. Recently, in promotion of his brand new book, he has done this video where he comes out of the closet to basically state he is a universalist. Now, should Rob not be stating that in this provocative video, then he needs to apologize alone for this questioning of justification. Rob Bell will be leading millions millions of people to potentially believe you don't have to believe in Jesus. You can believe in whatever you want to. Apparently, the standard is now Rob Bell's standard of goodness, that a guy like Gandhi can get to heaven because apparently he was good enough. What? Gandhi didn't need the forgiveness offered by Jesus Christ? And so on that level, this story, this saga, which is lighting up the internet as well it should, is a very cautionary tale. This is a sad story of a man who is leading people. Paul said, let them be cursed, let them be anathema, damned if they preach any other gospel. And so it is, we're worried about this guy and his followers, but there is another level of tragedy, perhaps actually two more. Where's everybody been on this? Where have the teachers been on this fellow? He's been at this not just since yesterday, but for years. It has at least been five years since we've been following. This man wrote a book called Sex God. Okay, anybody? Hello, a little bit of a flare should be going off. He writes a book called Sex God. And his theology in the past has at the least been hinky and dangerous and even heretical. 
For years he has been off the track. And now, just now, we are starting to hear whispers from some of the big boys going, uh oh, it looks like we got a problem with Rob Bell. And here's what's happening on the internet. People are, okay, here's, here's Rob Bell teaching his, his, his heretical universalism in this particular video. And then over here, here's, okay, look, oh, look at this. Here's all, here's all the big guys, and here's all, the, all, the, all the, the vocal people for evangelicalism. For years they've been mum, but now they're speaking out and going, whoa, did you see that video? And now, guess what's happening? Over here, on this, this, these are all the people who love Rob Bell. And you know what they're doing? They're going after the good guys. How dare you attack him? My question is, fellas, where have you been? Where have you been? You see, it's five years ago, seven years ago, you would have been dealing with a sapling in Rob Bell. Now, he's literally a mighty oak. And now they're coming out and saying, hey, we got to chop this thing down. This thing is dangerous. Well, have fun with that because all of these guys are getting really, really torqued at all of these guys. We waited too long. I understand, Pastor. I, I, a little, not perfectly. I, I sort of understand your world a little bit. I know you're shepherding the flock. I know you're trying to preach the whole counsel of God. But these days, there are so many wolves at the door. And your flock is watching this guy and gobbling it down. And they are being fed poison. And if you do not speak out by name against guys like this, you're going to get hammered from these folks right here. And you're going to get hammered from your own flock. Hey, look, the most magnificent thing in the world there is to talk about is Jesus Christ dying for sinners. We love to proclaim the gospel, but Jesus warned us that there would be wolves, that there would be false teachers. Read, the, read Second Peter. Read First Timothy about the treacherous teachers worming their way into people's homes with Numa videos. We got to be warning people. Well, guys, please, when, when, we, when we start to see these things cropping up, I know some of the discernment ministries get really yang and yang and they're just nasty about things. I understand, but that shouldn't keep preachers, dear pastor, you from speaking out when these things, when we start to get a little whiff, when we start to get a little smell of a guy like this who's teaching things that are, we shouldn't just be, well, you know, he seems like a nice fellow and we're just going to kind of wait and see. Hold on. We can't. We can't afford to. Because he went from being just a little tiny bud to being this amazing olive tree. And people are finding their shade in Rob Bell. And they are being deceived. And worse than that, they're not even hearing the magnificent, amazing, profound, glorious truths of the gospel. It's the greatest gospel verse in the Bible, 2 Corinthians 5.21. He made him who knew no sin, sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Let me unpack those 15 Greek words. He, God, made Jesus sin. What do you mean he made Jesus sin? Only in one sense. He treated him as if he had committed every sin ever committed by every person who would ever believe, though in fact he committed none of them. Hanging on the cross, he was wholly harmless, undefiled. Hanging on the cross, he was a spotless lamb. He was never for a split second a sinner. He is holy God on the cross. But God is treating him, I'll put it more practically, as if he lived my life. God punished Jesus for my sin, turns right around and treats me as if I lived his life. That's the great doctrine of substitution. And on that doctrine turned the whole reformation of the church. That is the heart of the gospel. And what you get is complete forgiveness covered by the righteousness of Jesus Christ. When he looks at the cross, he sees you. When he looks at you, he sees Christ. <laughs> I got news for Mr. Bell and for anybody who will hear. There's no greater message than that.